We've got three diamonds that aren't redeemed. Who's least developed? The white one. So I said I wanted to talk about the characters in Steven Universe that could really benefit from a sixth season, or limited epilogue series in this case. We've already spoken about a certain bubblegum babu previously, so now it's time to cover something a lot bigger. And I mean a lot bigger. It's the Diamonds, aka the most controversial characters ever put in Steven Universe. Some think they're sweet and adorable, some think they're awful and irredeemable, some think they were redeemed after the events of Change Your Mind, some think they haven't changed much at all and still have a redemption in their future, some think it's all an act and they're just playing Steven and company like a fiddle to get what they want. Pretty much anything you can imagine has been thrown at this trio, from glowing praise to visceral hatred, and I've been eager to give my own thoughts on them, especially Miss Large and in charge herself, White Diamond. Being the least developed of the diamonds, she's the one with the most room for deep exploration. And seeing that she appears in Steven Universe Future's opening not once, but twice, and in completely different scenarios, there's no doubt that they're planning to do something huge with her character, and likely the other two diamonds as well. So let's have some fun here and try to predict exactly what could be in store for these once devious dictators. As usual, a lot of this is just prediction based on what we're given. I don't claim that everything I say is fact, I just think it would be fun to come up with my own theories and what I'd like to see happen. So with all that said, let's dive into what I want from White Diamond. First things first, what do we know about the diamonds? Well, like all gems, they were designed and crafted for a specific purpose, in this case being the authoritative heads of various gem colonies. They have experience in leadership, colonization, controlling groups, eliminating rebellions if necessary, you know, your basic galactic overlord starter pack. Everything about the diamonds from their abilities to their beliefs to their personality traits were programmed, not organically developed like humans. Straight from the sugar's mouth, gems are technology meticulously designed AI. Their mentalities were instilled in them at birth and also reinforced by the diamonds that lie above them on the spectrum. And it's pretty clear to me that whoever did end up making the diamonds, whether it be a space worm or some other entity, wanted to make sure that everything was completely perfect so that he didn't have to intervene. Let's look at the diamond infrastructure for a second. We got Pink at the bottom, who was the least experienced leader, and often needed to be instructed and informed by Yellow and Blue, acting as a sort of training diamond for Yellow and Blue to practice being authority figures on. Yellow and Blue are an equal placement in the middle, which explains their close relationship and also their conflicting personalities. They act as a sort of governmental yin and yang, which balance each other out with militarism and diplomacy. And at the very top, we have White Diamond who drips down her ideals of perfectionism to all those below her and can be used as a secret weapon to mind control those who don't conform. The creator of all gems likely built this to be the ultimate self-sustaining government system, with pink being used to keep yellow and blue's leadership skills sharp, yellow and blue forming the perfect balanced middle ground, and white acting as an ultimate last resort, being used to stop anyone interfering with the perfectionist vision that all gems are meant to follow. But one thing the Diamond's creator didn't expect was for his last resort to eventually falter. And to read into this further, let's talk about Change Your Mind! <laughs> hey, shush! I know it was insanely rushed, but the Crooniverse had their reasons. And hey, this is their big chance to fix everything, so just give them a chance, alright? Alright, here we go. So during the final events of that episode, we see White experiencing her first flaw when she blushes, and this drives her absolutely insane. She was programmed with the certainty that she was flawless. She exists without flaw, and through her power she can relieve gems of any flaw by essentially making them act just like her. And yet here she is, pink in the face and questioning everything that was ever instilled in her. And this is the moment where everyone makes the assumption that Pink Diamond is officially redeemed. She's changed her ways, she's a good guy, why else would she go down with Steven and fix the broken gems? Well, not exactly. Think about this for a second. The number one thing White believed has been completely shattered. She herself is flawed, and by default, hypnotizing other gems doesn't make them flawless. If anything, they become just as flawed as her. Everything she knows is wrong. She is essentially lost. So what is her first instinct when her life now has no direction? To follow the one person who revealed her hidden flaw and likely knows way more about the subject than she does. 
If the original path she was following ended up being a complete lie in the first place, she figures that if she's flawed, this must be the path that she needs to follow in order to better understand herself and get some answers. Just look at how she behaves when she ends up on Earth wincing at the corrupted monsters, slowly climbing into the pool while cringing, darting her eyes back and forth constantly, she's clearly scared and unsure, probably thinking, okay, am I doing this right? Is this what flawed beings are supposed to do? All right, I guess I'll do that. She's like a lost puppy in a way. A gigantic, white, shiny lost puppy with good fashion sense, but you get the idea. Okay, what about the movie? She seems a lot more friendly and emotional there, especially towards Steven. Yeah, but here's what I'm thinking. I mentioned in my Spinel video that Spinel is not going to take Steven's place on Pink Diamond's throne, and instead is going to serve as an emotional replacement for Pink. But whose emotional replacement exactly? It must be all of the diamonds since they all pressure Steven to live with them, plus they all sing Let Us Adore You in unison, so it's gotta be all three, right? Well, knowing what I know about the diamonds and their relationships, this is what I think is going on, and try to stay with me here. My guess is that Blue Diamond and to a lesser extent Yellow Diamond are the ones who desperately need a replacement for Pink. Blue absolutely adores Pink. She completely broke down into depression when Pink was quote unquote shattered, she grieved at Pink's palanquin, she was willing to hear every possibility that Blue Zircon brought up in order to gain some more clarity, and when Steven's true origin was revealed and he spent some alone time with the other diamonds, Blue spends it by recounting all the fun that the four of them used to have together. Heck, she was the first one to call Steven by his actual name, thinking it was just a funny name Pink made up and wanting to play along. And don't even get me started with Change Your Mind, where she was the one to free Steven because she understood her original mistake and didn't want to mess up with Pink a second time. She clearly really wants Pink or someone like Pink in her life, and will do anything to have her back. Yellow Diamond definitely has her moments of affection towards Pink, like her breakdown at the end of What's the Use of Feeling Blue, and how much she likes how Pink could make her laugh, but she seems to be able to deal with things a lot better than Blue. In fact, I imagine that her main reason for wanting a Pink replacement is actually to make Blue happier. Granted, it's a little bit for herself, but more so for Blue, considering how close she is with her. So does this mean that White doesn't want a Pink replacement at all? Well, kinda. Things with her go far beyond just filling a hole in her heart. She's not clamoring for Steven just because she wants another pink. She specifically needs Steven to function now. Remember how I said that at the end of Change Your Mind she was 100% mentally lost? How she followed Steven religiously because he was the one to unveil her flaw and must have all the answers in her eyes? Well I imagine that spending all that time with Steven, reshaping the kingdom and whatnot, has actually made things worse for her. She is now completely reliant on Steven for guidance since she's been following him for so long. Just look at the way she's always the first to approach Steven, always so forward, even pushing others out of the way to get to the point, constantly trying to play to Steven's emotional side with fake sadness, and constantly going for brownie points with Steven by repeating his teachings and waiting for his approval. Simply put, visits from Steven aren't enough anymore. She wants him to stay on Pink's throne so he can keep guiding her without interruption or waiting. She needs him, hence why she's so forward to get him to stay with them. Alright, so if she's so desperate for Steven to stay, then why does she accept Spinel as a replacement? Simply put, she didn't. She's just covering up. As far as Blue and Yellow are concerned, she wants Steven to stay for the same reason as them, because she misses Pink. Little do they know that White actually wants Steven to stay because she basically doesn't know what to do without him. But she doesn't want to admit that since she's afraid that the other diamonds might look down on her for it. Heck, they were already disgusted and scared by her when they saw her first flaw, and that was just a simple change of color, so imagine what might happen if they see a flaw as pathetic as this. The most likely case is that they would just accept it, but I imagine that she would assume the worst, given what happened last time. Another observation. Notice how forward White Diamond was with insisting that Steven stay with them, and then compare it to how casually she talks about Spinel. She doesn't really seem super excited about her. If anything, the few reactions she has to Spinel seem kind of disappointed. Like when she says, Spinel, I... and then cuts herself off. I actually thought that the full sentence was supposed to be, Spinel, I don't think that's such a good idea. But she knows that if she says that, the other diamonds might get suspicious. So she just accepts Spinel as a way to pacify blue and yellow and just rolls with it. And now we have the future. 
Steven is only visiting Homeworld on occasion, and the other diamonds are happy with their new pink. This leaves White alone again, suffering in secrecy and completely unsure of what to do next. Steven's not there to guide her, so what is she supposed to do? Only follow the teachings that Steven already taught her? Well, what if something new comes and she's not prepared for it? Should she just go back to the way things were? The gem empire in the palm of her hand? It worked once and was all she knew once upon a time, so maybe that would work better? She is just completely racked with uncertainty and unable to really tell it to anyone at the risk of looking pathetic again. In an ironic twist, she's now doing the same thing that Yellow and Blue were apparently doing under her original rule, suffering in silence. Stuff like this is what I hope to see from White Diamond. Show her suffering, show her conflicted, show her nervous and unsure of things. Show that her hasty change of sides was not a healthy decision and that she clearly needed time to truly find herself like many other characters did. Certain people complain about how Change Your Mind was far too rushed, but if they show something like this, where these rushed events actually serve a narrative purpose and add to White Diamond's character in a unique way, they'll have a reason to exist and will actually make people happy that they happened. It's like how some people gave up on Steven Universe after Cheeseburger Backpack from Season 1, but those that stuck around were later rewarded with the episode The Test. I'm always one to stick with the series if I believe they have the time and skill to fix certain flaws, and this is the Crooniverse's chance to fix one of the biggest flaws in the show. However, I'm sure you're all still asking how exactly White ties to the other villains. She's on that screen for a reason, and all their eyes and gems are glowing the exact same color. Is it hypnosis? Mind control? Some people have been saying that, and it's a definite possibility. But here's a little prediction of my own. Like many people have said so far, I do believe that this worm guy from the future intro is probably the creator of the diamonds. And to make things simple, I'm just gonna call him Wormy, because it's easier to say, and also, I like Spongebob, don't judge me. So like we mentioned already, the gems are technological beings with AI, and Wormy likely created these AI to colonize space without him needing to intervene. By design, his system is stable, infallible, and self-sustaining enough for him to just kick back, have a slice of pizza, or whatever a Space Worm's version of pizza is. Boba Fett, I guess? Yeah, have a slice of Boba Fett and just let the colonization play out. Wormy created all the gem species we know today, but his first creation was White Diamond. Now this gem was going to be his flawless leader, the one that would keep literally everything in order so he wouldn't have to do a thing. We know absolutely nothing about the creator's personality, if he even has one, but I imagine he probably would have created White very meticulously. Maybe a bit too meticulously. So much so that he paid way too much attention to the little details, and as a result overlooked various big issues with White's design, hence the flaws she has. I can speak as a perfectionist myself that it's not unlikely to overlook very obvious things while focusing on the small stuff. And one of the things he overlooked was wiping all of White's memories of him. I would imagine that Wormy would erase any memories that the gems have of him, so that they could just carry on with their society without bothering him or contacting him or even knowing that he existed. If they did know that there was a higher power than them, I imagine they would have contacted him for many of the crises they've endured. Heck, Era 2's existence alone with Pink Shattering and White's isolation would be enough reason to ring up Dear Old Dad, am I right? So yeah, I imagine that no one knows of Wormy's existence. Except for White. While searching herself for an answer to her problems, she comes across a mental image. An image of a gigantic worm-like creature on a distant planet. It seems familiar to her, like she remembers it from her past. Thinking this thing might hold the answer to her problem, she sends Yellow, Blue, and Spinel away to check on Earth and see if Steven needs any help. Then she takes her own ship and goes searching the galaxy for whatever this strange creature from her memories is. She eventually comes across a planet that looks exactly like the one she pictured in her head. On that planet, she finds Wormy, and when she asks who he is, he says that he is her original creator. White Diamond is equal parts upset and angry at Wormy, asking him why he gave her a flaw when flawless existence is all she knows, how she is completely lost and unsure of what to do. Wormy is beside himself and is shocked that his greatest creation could be so problematic. He demands to see what his empire has become under her command and all he sees is chaos. Gems rebelling, breeding with humans, ceasing colonization, everything is a complete mess. Considering all the work he did, he doesn't want to start from scratch, so he decides to make do with what he has right in front of him. He tells White that he'll fix her right up, 
and his plan of fixing her is to control her and force her to restore the Empire to the once perfect state it was in once upon a time. And now, this is where the rebelling gems come into play. White, now under Wormy's control, organizes a group of gems that reject Steven's way of life and want the old system of government back, including gems like Jasper, Eyeball, and Aquamarine. They get some PR going, especially Jasper with her very notable reputation, and soon enough they have an army ready to stomp out Steven and his friends. Maybe they even capture a watermelon Steven and reverse engineer Steven Spit to make their own plan abominations like this cactus creature. But the twist is that White's mind is still completely intact. Wormy is only controlling her actions and her words, kind of like a puppet. White is still able to see everything that goes on, and much like she was before this happened, she's still conflicted over whether this is the right thing to do. That is what I like to think this screen represents. Everyone having the same colored eyes and gems doesn't show that they're all hypnotized, it shows that they all share the same vision. The vision of the once perfect empire. The vision that Wormy implanted in them from the beginning, as shown by how his eyes beam during the scene. And while everyone else stands proud and sure of the vision they're following, White is holding her head, forced to follow the vision whether she likes it or not. She has both a pink tint, which could represent Steven's teachings as the new pink diamond, and her glowing eyes, which represents Wormy's vision of perfection. And while Wormy is controlling her body, her head is still wrestling with these two ideologies, unsure of which one is the better choice. And Steven, being the peacekeeper that he is, might be able to save the day by using his telekinesis to talk to the real white diamond within, which could lead to some great emotional moments between the two and a proper redemption for her. So yeah, some people might think this delves into some very fanfic -y territory and I apologize for that, but no matter how Steven Universe future ends up, the bottom line is that I just really want White to play a major role in this new series. A lot of people have been predicting that she'll just be replaced or rejuvenated, or basically just reset back to her original form to be used as a tool or a weapon, and I'm not gonna lie, that would be kind of boring. I want the white we know to still be able to react to everything that's going on. Knowing what she knows now, I want her to be a spectator to what she originally did to make the perfect empire and see what she now thinks. There are tons of things you could do with White's character in this upcoming series, and as long as the writers are on top of their game, I'm sure that whatever they come up with will be fantastic. Maybe I'll be right, maybe I'll be wrong, maybe I'm just a Ronaldo wannabe spewing out gibberish, but until the future comes, I guess a guy can dream. Well, that's all I've got for you today. Feel free to tell me what you'd like to see from White Diamond, and stay tuned for more Steven Universe and cartoon videos coming soon. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and I hope to see you all real soon.